Hello everyone, my name is Jim and welcome back to My Movie Obsession, a place for film obsessives. And a couple of weeks ago, instead of going to see Bumblebee, I decided to watch Stan and Ollie. Imagine my shock horror when I discovered Bumblebee has the same Rotten Tomatoes score as Stan and Ollie. I mean, come on mate, can't be right. John Cena pissing around with a CGI robot. No chance. Stan Nolly, of course, focuses on the classic comedy team of Laurel and Hardy, and it's actually set during a time when their careers were kind of winding down, when they embarked on a tour during 1953 and struggled to actually get another film made. This movie is spectacular, guys. Even if you're not a fan of Laurel and Hardy, which I have no idea why you wouldn't be, get on that as well. It is just joyful. It's a joyful movie experience. I think it's one of the best movies of the last five years possibly 10. Ask her it, I'll say it, 10 years. So this is the story of, of course, the friendship of Lauren and Hardy. I love Lauren and Hardy. I've been a big fan of them ever since I was a kid. And I actually made the decision after watching this film that I'm going to watch every single Lauren and Hardy film because growing up, they brought me so much joy. They brought me so much happiness. And, you know, this film has compelled me to go, you know, you can't let this work go unrecognized you can't miss out because these guys have become immortal and this really is a film about how that you can become immortal through making people happy through you know you're timeless you know it always seems like to me in a weird way that lauren hardy is still alive because they're alive in our hearts and that's what this film is about it's about happiness and joyful comedy and you know showbiz and doing things for the right reasons and it living forever that charm living forever that friendship living forever so it's obviously a story of friendship but also friendship of necessity showbiz friendships it goes deep into lauren hardy's friendship it's not just their best of pals all the time there is a showbiz element to it there is a necessity to it but underneath there is that strong friendship which kind of gets corrupted a bit by their desire to keep Lauren Hardy going. You know, Stan Laurel, played by Steve Coogan, is a bit of an arse in this. He tries to keep Lauren Hardy going through lying a lot of the times and, you know, just trying his best to scrape by because he knows that Lauren Hardy are going downhill. And it was a fascinating era of their careers to focus on, you know, because they're not these massive stars in this film the only time we see the massive stars is at the start but then it skips forward and these guys are struggling and they've become underdogs again stan laurel kind of sacrifices his own happiness and he will kind of lie to everyone around him to keep this the idea of lauren hardy doing another film alive but you forgive him because these guys are so likable and you understand why the partnership of lauren and hardy meant as much to them as the friendship that they had. It was kind of the friendship and the partnership and what happened on screen, it all came together. It's a fascinating look at how you shouldn't focus your friendship with someone on the work you do with them, but when the work you do with them brings so much happiness all around the world to everyone, it kind of all comes together and encapsulates and you've got to fight for everything about your friendship including that showbiz and necessity element of it the performances are amazing steve coogan pretty much is stan laurel in this film he pretty much is uh, he nails all the mannerisms you know and it warmed my heart it really did john c Riley, of course plays oliver hardy and you know what i actually think he outdoes steve coogan in the acting chops i actually do these guys put in the performances of lifetime and it's just a bit baffling that John C. Riley literally puts one of the best performances of the last 10 years and he goes from this to Holmes and Watson. I rather watch the Children of the Corn series on repeat. Maybe. But you shouldn't have done Holmes and Watson. There's also a wonderful depiction of Lauren and Hardy's wives, played by Shirley Henderson and Nina Arianda. It's a wonderful depiction because these wives, one of them is a little bit of a battle axe, but she's likable and she's got a different kind of personality to the other wife you know they're kind of at loggerheads but they again like lauren and hardy they have this underlying friendship and this is a movie about flawed people everyone in this is flawed everyone in this is trying their best not to be corrupted by showbiz and hold on to real human relationships but it really is how that spectacle of lauren hardy can be a blessing and a curse there is really is a moment near the end with the wives which is almost as charming as you know some of the moments of lauren hardy you know just such a smile on your face film it's such a bittersweet film this and it of course captures lauren hardy's act and personalities it's wonderful how even when they're not on stage you see them kind of going into their routines slipping seamlessly into those routines and it just warms your heart because again it shows that what who they were in the films it was amped up but it was true to life 
and it's just wonderful that the spirit of Lon Hardy was always with them whatever they were doing and it always saw them through and there was something quite hypnotizing about seeing Steve Coogan and John C. Riley play these characters so accurately and show them in their innocence on screen going through their acts it, by accident sometimes there's a few moments in the real life as I said where they end up acting like the Lauren Hardy on screen and it's just charming it's just fascinating and heartwarming there is a stunning a staggering heart-wrenching combination to this film which is so bittersweet made me feel so nostalgic made me feel so happy and made me once again appreciate Lauren Hardy as these just icons, pure icons, the funniest double act of all time. And I really think that the ending of this film, what you see Steve Coogan and John C. Riley doing, it's just a moment in time that will live forever. There's a magic to the final scene and it's basically a performance that they do, a charm to it, an innocence. After all they've been through, they're still there and Lauren Hardy are still going, but maybe they have to let go and the melancholy element of that. and. He, this is just a perfect, perfect combination to the film. I absolutely love Stan and Ollie, guys. I really, really recommend that you watch this movie. Go out of your way to watch it. It is one of those movies that makes you remember what movies can do, what they're there for, you know. And I'm glad I watched it instead of Bumblebee. Screw Bumblebee. 92% kiss my ass, mate. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, this channel focuses primarily on retro movie reviews from the 80s and 90s, as well as superhero movie reviews. And I have a review in the works for Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 for retro reviews. And I'm also going to be working on the Wonder Woman review for superhero movie reviews. As well as a few more small movie videos in between. So if you're a film obsessive, if you like the sound of that, please hit subscribe. Please let me know what you thought of Sand and Ollie in the comments below. If you have seen it, I'd be really interested in that. And thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video. Mountains of Virginia on the trail of the lonesome pine. In the blue ridge mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine. In the pale moonshine, our hearts entwine, where she carved a name and I carved mine. Oh, June, just like the mountains are blue, like the pine. I am lonesome for you.